What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we are going to be talking about a brand new pistol for 2019. We're going to be talking about the Mossberg MC1. Before I do that though, I want to mention my patron supporters, thank you guys very much. Because of you guys, we do patron-only content, a monthly giveaway, so thank you, I really appreciate it. If you were thinking about signing up, now is a great time because YouTube has 100% demonetized my channel. I've got some Amazon links, Olight links, and ammo, ammo links down below, so if you want to check out the description, all that stuff, including the patron and a local homeless shelter that I like to support is in there as well. Now getting back to the Mossberg MC1, what is it? Well, it is a single stack polymer frame, nine millimeter striker fired pistol, similar to lots of other pistols on the market, like the M&P Shield, Glock 43, the Walter PPS, and so on. It is actually the first pistol Mossberg has produced in over 100 years, and it, as I said, it's new for 2019. It has a flat face trigger right from the factory, a 3.4 inch barrel, 22 ounce overall weight, and it comes with a six and seven round magazine. Now this pistol was brought to me by BN Hunting. It's a company that I work with sometimes to bring you guns that I don't own. I really appreciate those guys. Uh, they shipped me this gun just to review. No strings attached, nothing like that. They just wanted to get their name out there and they are an amazing company. I, I don't work with very many companies but I do work with BN Hunting because they have an excellent track record of good price. They have good customer service and they're kind of a small company as well. So if you wanna order a Mossberg like this or you want to order the M&P Shield which is what else I got from them or if you want to order a Glock 43, Sig P365, any of the guns that I review they can get you. As you can see all the edges are beveled nothing there to catch or snag on or hurt your hand or anything so if you're running your hand across the slide very aggressively you're not gonna cheese grate your fingers so you don't have to worry about that. It's also most likely not going to catch on your clothing if you are pulling it from your waistband or appendix or any any kind of situation where you're uh, inside the waistband carrying this pistol or even ankle carry you're not going to catch it on your pant leg that's the idea at least I personally didn't experience any of that either when I was uh, trying that out so well done by Mossberg you can see that flat face trigger comes right from the factory it's got some interesting texture here it's got front slide serrations and it's got three dot sights it also has a reversible magazine release, so if you're one of those weird lefty guys, you can reverse it with no issues, which is a big advantage for, what, like 10, 11% of you guys out there. Uh, you guys deserve to have a magazine release on whatever side of the pistol you want, so even if you are right-handed and you feel like putting it on there, be my guest. Oh, did I mention that it does take Glock magazines. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these are the magazines that it came with, these translucent uh, magazines that were uh, shipped with it and uh, this is what you'll get when you get your Mossberg. I actually tested it with some uh, G43 magazines and they were very reliable with no issues whatsoever. Now what would I use this gun for? Well it seems pretty obvious to gun guys but honestly you would only pretty much use this for concealed carry. Uh, you could flex this into home defense a little bit but being a very small single stack 9mm these are generally designed perfectly for concealed carry and that's usually where it ends. However, if there was a murderer inside your house and this was the only gun you owned and you pulled it out, uh, he wouldn't be very happy. It is an appropriate caliber. You just have limited rounds and it's a little bit more difficult to shoot than its double stack larger uh, cousins like the G19 or the M&P Compact. Now as far as reliability goes, I think I had two or three failures in a thousand rounds. We did shoot this pistol for a thousand rounds just to make sure because it is a new design and I wanted to get a very thorough review out there for you guys especially considering this gun if you're going to be using it would be most likely in a self-defense situation this really isn't a USPSA IDPA type of gun so I wanted to make sure it was very reliable and I would say overall that's pretty reliable now guns like the shield or the Glock 43 I would consider to be slightly more reliable however this again is the one of the first made by them in the first uh, iteration of this pistol and it's the first time they've made a pistol in a hundred years so it could be the fact that this just has a couple of chinks that it needs to work out like the p365 or even the uh, glock 43s uh, when they first came out they had some issues as well it also theoretically could be the magazines well one of the reasons why i changed to the actual 43 magazines is because i saw no issues with those and i saw no issues with this one either actually uh 
all of the uh, malfunctions came from this magazine right here so it's possible it may not even be the gun it's possible it may just be this particular magazine right here however I did continue using it to see if the problem persisted and it didn't get any worse after I had those two malfunctions I believe and then I also had a very strange one we'll talk about here in a second uh, it was problem free for the last 500 rounds so maybe it was a break-in period thing maybe it was an ammo thing maybe it didn't like the particular ammo I was using but either way I figured I would mention those failures anyway because I know that's very important but like I said there's a lot of factors at play there and it's kind of hard to blame the gun uh, it is a new design it was a singular magazine and it was a singular type of ammo once the ammunition was changed and the magazines were changed I had no problems you ready yep Has that happened before with this gun? Mm -mm. It's my lucky day. Now, the third malfunction that I saw was a very strange one, and I did post about this on Instagram, and I do consider this a fault of the gun, and I do consider it a design flaw. Now, the Mossberg comes with a no trigger pull takedown feature, which is very popular these days because apparently there's a lot of rednecks shooting themselves in the nuts, cleaning their guns. Make sure, for the love of God, to safety check your firearms. We don't want to give anybody any more ammo to use right now in the media, so please safety check your guns try to negate the uh, negligent discharges as much as possible however if you're into not pulling the trigger when you're taking down the pistol and i there's some of you that have that preference i'm fine with that uh, this pistol's for you but it does cause a problem for me where you do press this button down here to uh, disassemble the rear of the pistol here and then the striker comes out during firing i actually had this come a little bit loose and just the tip of this actually stopped the pistol right there and held it out of battery. Now it was easy to fix. I simply pushed the pistol uh, slide up like this, pushed it back up, it locked into place, and I was good to go and it never happened again. However, because of this feature, that is a malfunction that you could possibly see uh, that you won't see on something like a shield or a Glock 43. Now we're gonna get into accuracy here and accuracy for the Mossberg MC1 was phenomenal. It was awesome for a small gun. I could hit it 50 to 75 yards with very little trouble, especially in comparison to something like a stock Glock 43. Glock 43 is a great gun. I personally carry a 43X. However, the stock version of it uh, right out of the box is not what I would call on par with other guns like the Shield or the MC1. The MC1 does come with a better trigger and it does come with a better sights, set of sights outside the box than the Glock 43 and that inherently makes it more accurate. The trigger on the MC1, I was actually pretty impressed with. It seemed initially like it was just kind of a marketing ploy, but it really is a better trigger, and it really does feel a little bit better. And like I said, you're getting it for free, so that's pretty impressive. I was able to hit consistently at 75 yards, and for a very small subcompact like this, man, I gotta say that's very impressive. Wow. Oh. Couple of misses there. I think that's just me. That's okay. Speed is a little bit lacking, as you would imagine, with a very small single stack. The texture on the gun right here does help a little bit, although I do wish they would have covered the entire grip of this texture. It's missing texture right here, which I don't really understand. There seems to be an indent there on either side where you could have just put that. This kind of reminds me of the grip zone. Everybody makes fun of the grip zone on the, on the Springfields. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, it works, as I said, but I wish the entire grip was covered in it because it's not too aggressive. It's not even like shield 2.0 aggressive so i wish they would have covered that but it does work just fine 
Uh, because I have big hands and with this grip being so small, as you can see right here, my, my ring finger barely fits on here. It's kind of like a one finger gun for me. So I did really enjoy shooting it much better with the pinky extension and that also gives you an extra round. And because it is angled, it doesn't print quite as much. You only print just a little bit more. I would really prefer this. Honestly, if, if I was running Mossberg, I would just ship it with two or even three of these magazines and I'd leave this guy at home. Uh, speed was also helped a little bit by that trigger. We'll go through the reset here real quick. Not too bad for a very small pistol. Not too great. There's not an audible reset, which is what I really like, but you can feel the reset. And honestly, under firing, that's more important because, you know, I don't really listen to the reset. I, I kind of hone it into my muscle memory and then I kind of use it when I'm shooting rapid strings of fire. So the tactile reset, the feel of it is all right. Wow. Uh, for a small pistol, it shoots more than quick enough. I would put it on par with the Glock 43 for sure. Overall, the ergonomics are pretty good. We touched on them a little bit. They have those front slide serrations. You want to do your tactical press checks. The sights are pretty good. The, the uh, triggerless takedown is is okay. I would prefer that's eliminated, but I know that's a selling feature for a lot of people. Uh, personal preference aside, if it wouldn't have slid down, it wouldn't have been an issue. It did once, maybe that will never happen to you, maybe that will never happen on uh, future designs, but I did see it, so I do mention it. The slide release works great, magazine release works great, the trigger undercut is exceptional. How Glock has not figured this out yet is beyond me. This is significantly better than what you can get from Glock. It doesn't have an accessory reel, but that does not surprise me. They do make weapon lights that connect right to the trigger guard, so if you're into weapon lights on your tiny little pistol, that works great. The uh, three inch barrel is very short, but the gun still is very accurate. You're gonna lose a little bit of velocity with a smaller pistol like this, but nothing to write home about. So overall, to me, it's a pretty excellent pistol. I do wish I wouldn't have had those failures. However, if I ditch this magazine, uh, technically with this magazine, I had zero. With the actual Glock magazines, I had zero. So would I be confident in carrying this pistol? Yeah, I don't think it would be an issue. I mean, if you consider even two or three failures out of a thousand rounds is a very, very small amount. However, it should be zero. But I have had malfunctions in Glock 43s, and I have had malfunctions in, in uh, SIG P365s. The price point on this is only $324 on BN Hunting's website. So if you want to go pick one up, it certainly doesn't break the bank, and it shoots extremely accurately for a small pistol. As I said, you gotta you gotta hit it a little bit for those reliability issues. But other than that, it's pretty excellent. And honestly, I haven't heard a lot of reliability issues from other people. So maybe it's just my dumb luck. Who knows? I'm also going to be doing a comparison between this guy and the shield here coming up, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.